Everybody, it's Ryan here again, and I bring warm greetings in the powerful name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, happy anniversary to you. This is our 70th mnemonic in the beautiful discipline of internal medicine. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the content as much as I am enjoying bringing it to you. And uh, God bless you. I'd like to place and record my sincere thanks and appreciation to those of you who have been subscribing and liking and sharing my channel. Thank you so very much. Today, we're talking about sickle cell anemia and the clinical features of sickle cell anemia. And the mnemonic is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, pain, right? So please allow me to favor you with a few dad jokes about pain. So did you know <clears throat> that during childbirth, there comes a point where the woman experiences such excruciating pain that just for a moment, she almost knows how bad it is to be a man who has the flu. <laughs> and what do you call a cow that you sit on, but it's super painful? You call it a couch. <laughs> Amen. So just a few scriptures to encourage you. Um, you know, when we look around this world and see all the turmoil and hardship that there is, it's very easy sometimes to despair. But we have hope in Jesus. The book of John chapter 16 verse 33 says, Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart for I have overcome the world. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, Never shall I leave you, nor will I forsake you. I am with you until the very end. What a wonderful promise. Okay, guys, let's talk about sickle cell anemia. So first up, what is sickle cell disease and why do people get it? So they, the pathophysiology behind sickle cell anemia is that there is indeed um, a mutation in the beta globin chain, which constitutes part of the hemoglobin molecule. Because we know hemoglobin is made up of heme and globin, and the heme is made up of iron and porphyrin. So in sickle cell disease, it's the globin chain synthesis that has a problem. This mutation, which leads to hemoglobin S, which then leads to polymerization of hemoglobin S, and the formation of elongated fibers that distort the shape of the red blood cell. And this then leads to vaso-occlusive uh, phenomenon uh, like um, infarctions and ischemia and hemolysis. Now, subtypes of this include sickle cell disease, which entails, uh, you know, homozygous hemoglobin S, which is most severe. Then we get hemoglobin SC disease, which is heterozygous, which is moderately severe, and sickle cell trait, which is also heterozygous hemoglobin S, which is mild. The clinical features of sickle cell anemia, guys, let's start off with the A. So A stands for anemia on the basis of chronic hemolysis, or it can be an acute anemia. All right. So in terms of chronic hemolysis, this has to do with a normocytic or a macrocytic anemia due to particular cytosis, elevated bilirubin, um, LDH, and low haptoglobin. And there indeed may be an association between chronic uh, anemia and folate and iron, which is substrate deficiency from increased utilization. But we can also get acute anemia on the basis of crises. Now there's three specific crises that we can get in the setting of acute sickle cell anemia. So there is the aplastic crisis in which there's transient arrest of erythropoiesis. There's the splenic sequestration crisis where there's renal occlusion of the spleen leading to pooling of red cells in the spleen. Then there's the so-called hyperhemolytic crisis with a sudden onset of severe hemolysis. All of these may be triggered by viral infections such as parvovirus B19. All right, bones, B for bones, where there's bony infarction, which can then lead to pancytopenia, avascular necrosis, fat embolism, and orbital compression syndrome. Cardiac issues includes myocardial infarct due to an increased oxygen demand you know, from the cardiac output. So it's a supply demand mismatch issue. Dermatological issues in the way of leg ulcers, which is common among patients who have sickle cell anemia. Mm, involvement of E, which is for eyes. Here we have proliferative retinopathy, retinal artery occlusion, retinal detachment and hemorrhage. F stands for fairly bad pain, where we have so-called pain crisis. 
which involves the back, the chest, the extremities, and the abdomen, may be associated with fever, swelling, tenderness, tachypnea, hypertension, nausea, and vomiting, and may be precipitated by weather changes, uh, dehydration, infection, stress, menses, and alcohol. Important to exclude these precipitants in patients who have pain crises. Multi-organ failure may develop with uh, severe pain episodes. G stands for genital, in the way of priapism. H is for hepatosplenic in the way of splenic infarct, acute hepatic ischemia, hepatic or splenic sequestration crises, and iron overload, especially when you transfuse these patients often. P stands for pulmonary in the way of restrictive lung disease as a result of chronic interstitial fibrosis. We can even get obstructive lung disease, hypoxemia, pulmonary hypertension, fat embolism. A, we're revisiting anemia again. Just a reminder that anemia and sickle cell disease is associated with both acute and chronic um, phases. I is for infections, sepsis, particularly asplenic patients who are susceptible to infections like meningitis and pneumonia and encapsulated organisms, right? Osteomyelitis. Uh, because of salmonella and gram-negative osteomyelitis. And lastly, the end for neurological sequelae in the way of ischemic stroke, intracerebral hemorrhage, septic emboli, spinal cord infarct or compression, vestibular dysfunction, sensory hearing loss, and cognitive failure. So those are all the clinical features of sickle cell anemia. So how do we investigate someone with sickle cell anemia? So your labs uh, and then microbiology. So on the labs, we've got a full blood count with a differential, urea and electrolytes, a liver function panel, do your lactate dehydrogenase, right? Haptoglobin, which will be low in the setting of hemolysis. Smear will show you uh, sickle dead cells, polychromasia from reticular cytosis, how jolly bodies from hyposplenia. You can have reticular sites, you do your red cell folate, iron, ferritin, and percent saturation, uh, transferrin, hemoglobin electrophoresis to identify the different subtypes that we spoke of, and urinalysis. <clears throat> In terms of uh, specimens for microbiology, send off blood culture and sensitivity, so uh, blood cultures, sputum gram stain with acephas bacilli and MCS, urine culture and sensitivity, stool culture and sensitivity, uh, stool also for ova and parasites and for C. diphtoxin A and B, right? In terms of your management of sickle cell anemia, there's management of acute versus management of a chronic uh, uh, phases. So in acute sickle cell anemia, we, uh, as per our, you know, life support guidelines, uh, you know, the ABCs, airway breathing circulation, provision of oxygen and IV fluid. If there's vaso-occlusive pain crisis, you give fluids and pain control in the way of morphine or even some non steroidals like ketorolac. If there's aplastic crisis, you want to transfuse the patient and you want to avoid your uh, granulocyte colony stimulating factor. Sequestration crisis to give fluids with judicious transfusion if symptomatic anemia is there to avoid overload if there's trapped splenic blood which re-enters the circulation. Um, for acute chest syndrome, which is chest pain or pulmonary infiltrates, cough, progressive anemia, hypoxemia, with or without fever, you treat the precipitating factor, all those factors that we mentioned, you make provision for fluids, pain control and transfuse. For priapism, <laughs> which comes under the genital issues here, you want to hydrate the patient, provide analgesia, transfuse, and get an urgent urology consult. And uh, preoperatively, you want to transfuse to a hemoglobin of 10. In terms of managing chronic uh, hemolysis from sickle cell anemia, you need to incorporate a multidisciplinary team. Immunizations are important, especially against strep pneumonia, hemophilus influenza, Neisseria meningitis, hepatitis B, and influenza, not forgetting a COVID vaccine as well. Exchange transfusion in the way of uh, a, a goal hemoglobin S of below 30%. Hydroxyurea, which we know is a reductive agent to increase the levels of fetal hemoglobin and decrease the incidence of vaso-occlusive pain. And folic acid, 1 milligram daily per us. All right. So, guys, this was a mouthful, but God bless you. Thank you for joining me on our 70th mnemonic video looking at clinical features of sickle cell anemia, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, pain. Have a lovely day.